Jerry Rice's family is a key part of why he was able to be so successful in the NFL. But is there more to that story? This is the story of Jerry Rice's complex family life, and this is NFL Dive. Jerry Lee Rice was born on October 13, 1962 to his father, Joe Nathan Rice Sr., and his mother, Eddie B. Hart Rice, in Starkville, Mississippi. His parents played a huge role in making him the man and player he would go on to become, especially his hardworking dad, Joe. Joe Nathan Rice Sr. was born on March 25, 1936. Joe was a tough man who worked primarily as a bricklayer in the summer. He was reportedly 6 foot 4 inches tall and weighed over 280 pounds. This big man not only worked as a bricklayer, but also built the family's house himself in Crawford, Mississippi by hand. Crawford was pretty small, only having about 600 residents, so I bet that Joe was well known around town. He was a strict disciplinarian and raised all of his eight children with a firm but also a fair hand. Jerry helped his father out with his bricklaying work during the summer, which even helped him with his football game. How is that, you might ask? Well, Jerry would stand on top of a scaffold while his father laid bricks. From down below, someone would toss bricks to Jerry 20 feet up in the air, and he'd catch them and hand them to his father, so he had bricks to lay while he was building. Jerry credits this with teaching him how to catch a football. No wonder he had such great hands. I don't know about you, but I think catching bricks sounds like a pretty tough job. Do you think you could handle doing that all day? Because if you miss a brick and you're 20 feet in the air, you're going to come tumbling down. Okay. Right? When asked about how he would describe his father, Jerry said, quote, A guy that was going to discipline you, that was going to teach you that nothing is going to come easy. You're going to have to work for it. And, you know, he built our home that we lived in. He brought in money so that we could survive, and one of those guys that never said I love you, but you knew that he did, and you know what he instilled in me. I think it really made me into the individual that I am today." End quote. There's no doubt that Joe's work ethic was an important piece in making Jerry the excellent worker that he was in the NFL. As Jerry himself said, quote, I've thought about those long, hard days we worked together. He'd get me up at around 6 o'clock in the morning, and we'd get in at 5 o'clock at night. When I was doing that, I thought it was the worst thing possible, but looking back, I know it made me a better person. I learned I had to work hard to achieve anything in life." End quote. Joe passed away on February 24, 2004 at the age of 67 in Starkville, Mississippi. However, one of Jerry's parents still lived on. Eddie B. Hart Rice was born on October 5, 1937 to Tommy Hames and Thelma Hart Johnson in Starkville, Mississippi. Eddie married Joe Nathan Rice Sr. on December 22, 1954 and lived her life as a homemaker and mother to the couple's eight children. The two were married for nearly 50 years. Eddie was a devout Baptist and attended church every Sunday. Not only that, but she was also the president of the Gospel Choir. She was also a member of the Usher Ministry at Pine Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Eddie also was the first one who allowed Jerry to play football. She had initially thought that football was too rough and that he would get injured. However, she eventually relented and allowed Jerry to play. Obviously, the rest is history. It's a good thing that she allowed him to play football and become arguably the best wide receiver of all time. What do you think Jerry would have done if she hadn't let him play? Eddie passed away, unfortunately, on Christmas Day 2014 at the age of 77 in Jackson, Mississippi, after a long life spent caring for her family and her children. Speaking of those children, there are a lot of them. Jerry was the sixth of eight children born to his parents. He has five brothers and two sisters. Growing up, his big family struggled to make ends meet. As Jerry said later, quote, well, it was very tight, but I think it told us the meaning of hard work and dedication. You know, we didn't have everything, and, and we had to, to wait our turn, you know, for clothes, for everything. But I think because we were such a close family, we got through it, and I had no idea that I would be able to go back and give so much to my family down the road. Jerry loves his family, that's for sure, but who exactly are his siblings? We do know a little bit about Jerry's siblings. 
His older siblings were his sister Eddie Dean, his brother Joe Jr., his brother Tom, his brother James, and his brother Jimmy. He also has two younger siblings, a sister named Louisine and a brother named Zebedee. Out of his siblings, Jerry wasn't the first to play collegiate football. His older brother Tom was a standout athlete in high school in several sports and went on to play college football himself. He was a center at Jackson State and by all accounts looked pretty ready to play for the NFL. According to Jerry's biography, Tom expected to get drafted and pledged to use his first NFL paycheck to build his parents a house. However, due to being a bit small for the position and coming from a small school, Tom didn't even end up getting an NFL tryout. He went on to be a high school football coach back home, and his story inspired Jerry to make it to the NFL even more. Aside from Tom, Jerry's older brother James was also a great athlete, despite one main obstacle. He was born deaf. According to Jerry's biography, James was excellent at a lot of sports growing up, and he used his smarts to get an edge since he wasn't able to use his hearing. James went on to a special school for the deaf where he was able to use his intelligence even more. He eventually returned home to join his dad as a full-time bricklayer and was excellent at the job despite his disadvantages. Jerry's other brothers had other differing paths too. Joe Jr. and Jimmy had eventually become ministers in the church themselves, which probably made their mother very proud. That's not the Rice family's only connection to the church though. Jerry has found himself there a couple of times in a marriage ceremony. But who were the women? Jacqueline Bernice Mitchell Rice married Jerry Rice on September 8, 1987. Not much is known about her earlier life, but she met Jerry during his professional football playing career with the 49ers, and they later married. Jacqueline and Jerry also had three children together, but it wasn't easy. While delivering their third child, Jada, Jacqueline had complications which almost cost her her life. As Jerry said in an interview regarding the emergency, quote, We thought it was going to be a normal delivery, and all of a sudden, things just went crazy. And, and my wife, which is my ex now, she almost died. You know, she lost a lot of blood, and all of a sudden, chaos started, you know, happening in the delivery room, and I just knew it was a lot of commotion, people moving around real fast, and I knew something had gone wrong. And, you know, you think about, you know, when you're having a child, a lot of people don't realize that the consequences and the risk that you're taking, and all of a sudden, you know, we were in the midst of everything. So the baby was healthy, my ex-wife, she almost died, but she's doing well now." End quote. Jacqueline was in a coma for over three months after the episode with Jada's birth, though she did eventually recover. The drama in the relationship wasn't quite over, unfortunately, though. Jerry was eventually accused of infidelity by his wife Jacqueline, both due to a paternity suit that was filed in the case of Jerry's son Brendan Rice, in 2002, as well as other affairs. This led to Jacqueline filing for divorce in June of 2007, and the separation became official in December of 2009. Since their separation, news around Jacqueline has been pretty quiet, and maybe that's because there's a new woman in Jerry's life, Letitia Paleo. Letitia Paleo was born on October 17, 1971. Not much is known about her earlier life, but she eventually broke into the beauty industry. Paleo is a licensed esthetician who decided to use her knowledge of beauty care in order to start her own salon in 2007. Her salon is called Sol y Luna Skin Care and is located in San Carlos, California. The business, by all accounts, has been a success. However, perhaps her greatest success came when she met her future husband in Jerry Rice in 2008 at a local California gym. Their meeting came while Jerry was still legally married to his then-wife, Jacqueline, but the two were in the process of separating. They managed to keep their relationship secret despite Jerry's celebrity status at first, but eventually, of course, the secrets came out. Jerry and Letitia didn't rush into marriage, though, instead taking their sweet time. The couple dated for almost 10 years before Jerry finally proposed to Letitia at the All-Star Charity Gala in Tampa, Florida in March of 2018. I don't know about you, but I think that Jerry and Letitia probably dated so long because he wanted to be sure that Letitia was the one after his divorce from Jacqueline. Nothing wrong with that at all. About a year and a half later, the pair officially tied the knot in a wedding ceremony held at the Calistoga Ranch in Napa Valley on October 21st, 2019. They're still married and seem to be enjoying their lives by all accounts, and there are no plans for children in the future given that Jerry already has four kids of his own. And he's getting up there in age, of course. And speaking of which, those kids might actually be the most interesting thing about Jerry Rice's big family.
Jackie Benet Rice was born to Jerry Rice and Jacqueline Bernice Mitchell on June 7, 1987. She grew up with a famous dad and even got into a more infamous position when she went into prom with future Patriots standout wide receiver Julian Edelman back in 2005. Maybe that's how Julian got the X-Factor as a receiver. She would go on to attend Georgetown University where she got her bachelor's degree in political science and government. Not long after this, she moved on to Fordham University to pursue a law degree. Later on in her life, Jackie declared to take a different route than sports, electing to focus her talents on singing. But ultimately decided to instead pursue a real estate career. Sounds like she's really out there doing every kind of job. After a couple of years in real estate, she decided to strike out on her own, co-founding the hair extension and hair products company Tressley. This wouldn't prove to be her only venture, though, as she joined up with her dad to form Goat Fuel, which sells health-oriented projects designed to fuel athletes with energy. She also runs this venture with her husband, Trevion Gold, who has also worked as a musician. Do you think she'll be considered the goat of energy drinks someday? Hey, you never know, it's a crazy market. Jackie might be the oldest Rice child, but she's not the one that carried the heavy mantle of being Jerry Rice Jr. Jerry Rice Jr. was born to Jerry Rice and Jacqueline Bernice Mitchell on July 27th of 1991. He was born in Atherton, California. He followed in his father's footsteps by playing football at Menlo High School in Atherton. The versatile athlete played wide receiver, defensive back, and kick returner and was a standout. I believe that it's wherever is the best for me and however I you know, think my goals are is like depends on my success. His performance made him a three-star recruit, and he was pursued by several different colleges throughout the western United States, and he decided in the end he would attend the University of California, Los Angeles, or, you know, UCLA. He spent a total of four seasons at UCLA, but he didn't see very much action as a wide receiver, and as a result, Jerry Jr. decided to transfer to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, or UNLV, to earn his master's degree while playing out his final year of eligibility. He still didn't see much game action for the Rebels, but Jerry Jr. still got a chance at the next level. He had a couple of tryouts for a few different teams, including both the Baltimore Ravens and his dad's own longtime team, the San Francisco 49ers, but neither one chose to sign him. Jerry Jr. did eventually sign a contract with the Washington Redskins at the time, but his career took an unlucky turn after suffering a torn labrum during training camp. After a short stint with the Montreal Alouettes of the Canadian Football League, his football career unfortunately seemed to end, though it was still impressive that he made it to the professional level at all. Jerry Jr. is currently a real estate agent with Compass Real Estate in the Bay Area, where he uses the passion and drive that made him successful in sports to help his clients. It's a different kind of success, but I'm sure he's still making the Rice name proud. This next Rice child, though, is the only one who's been featured on TMZ. Jada Simone Rice was born on May 16, 1996 to Jerry Rice and Jacqueline Bernice Mitchell. Not much is known about her earlier life, but she eventually attended the University of San Francisco, where she graduated with a bachelor's degree in psychology. Unfortunately, Jada made headlines for some tough reasons in January 2018 while she was still in college. She claimed that she was physically assaulted by her ex-boyfriend Jerry Liggins, who was, at the time, an NFL player for the Seattle Seahawks. Ultimately, no charges were filed against Liggins. Jada currently works as an insurance agent in the San Francisco area. Jerry has one more child to talk about, but he probably has the most unusual story of them all. If I were Tom Brady's son, a lot of people would say there's a lot of pressure associated with that. I already exceeded everybody's expectations except my own. Well, why do I need to feel the need for pressure? Brendan Rice is Jerry Rice's son, but not from his marriage to Jacqueline Rice. As it turns out, Jerry had a relationship with another woman, Jackie Edwards, during his marriage to Jacqueline. And Brendan was born from this relationship in 2002. Jacqueline, Jackie... I admit it's a little confusing, but just remember, Brendan is a half-sibling to Jerry's other three kids. Brendan started out by playing soccer as a child, but couldn't resist the temptation to play football like his old man. He started to focus on the sport when he was six years old, and this was due in part to his mom being a big fan of the Dallas Cowboys, which, funny enough, is a bitter rival of his dad's main team, the San Francisco 49ers. 
This rivalry doesn't make a great place to start their father-son relationship, I guess. The relationship between Brendan and his father did start out a bit rocky, which is unfortunate but maybe a little understandable since he was born to a woman aside from Jerry's wife while they were still married. But as Brendan tells it, the relationship has, fortunately, improved quite a lot. Quote, it truly has gone from, yeah, we talk, but nothing too close, to actually being, hey, what's up, anytime throughout the day. End quote. Part of the improvement in the relationship might have stemmed from Brendan's improvement on the football field. After growing up in Chandler, Arizona, Brendan attended Hamilton High School, where he first played wide receiver. He had a good high school career and was a three-star recruit out of high school, which got him a scholarship at the University of Colorado. At the University of Colorado, Rice was a solid receiver during his freshman and sophomore seasons. However, he decided that there might be some greener pastures out there for him, and he transferred to the University of Southern California, or USC. In doing so, he was asked about his connection to his father Jerry and what it meant for expectations about his football career, and he said, quote, The last name holds a lot of gratitude toward everything, so you have to look at it as a blessing, but at the same time, it is my greatest downfall. I do not want to be recognized as just Jerry Rice's son, I want to be recognized as Brendan Rice." End quote. Brendan continues to work on carving out his own career, and he had the best year of his career in 2022, ranked fourth on the USC team in catches, and he looks to be a key contributor for the Trojans at wide receiver in the coming season, especially with the loss of Jordan Addison. Who knows, he could even help them to a national championship and get himself drafted. The sky's the limit. Well, we hope you enjoyed the story of Jerry Rice's family. Who is your favorite family member? Do you think that Brendan will one day make the NFL like his dad? Check out our other videos like this one about Tom Brady to learn more about the families of football's biggest stars. Remember to like the video if you liked it, and hit the subscribe button for more content on the families of NFL superstars.